Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, um, I am headed down now to some baseball. We've got a day full of clinics today. So, we're going 9 to 4. Uh, we've got hitting clinics in the morning. We do an eight week uh, annual fall and winter um, hitting clinic that we do. We've got, I think we've got like 35 kids or so in it. Um, and so, I've got that in the morning. And then we're heading to Brookline, which is uh, a town basically in Boston. Uh, we do uh, fielding clinics with uh, their players, with Brookline, Babe Ruth players. So we're taking, uh, we take a couple of our coaches down on Saturdays and do a workout down there with them, fielding wise. So we're taking, taking the big guns today, taking Johnny Reyna down and uh, Juan Rivera. So it'll be fun. Um, I got my breakfast with me again today. Today we went with, uh, what's up guys? Today we went with bagel again. Almost always a bagel. Probably not the best for me. And I uh, went to, with a cookie today. So we got a little cookie. Um, Lincoln, we have a player from Canada that came down. And uh, he comes down every, comes down a couple times a year to work out with us. Um, and they brought us 30, it feels like more than that because I feel like I've eaten 100. They brought us a huge thing of oatmeal chocolate chip uh, cookies, homemade from Canada, and they are unbelievable. So I ate about uh, 15 of them at practice, and then uh, now I eat them uh, pretty much every time I go into the kitchen. And I'm gonna have them for breakfast and probably again for lunch and again for dinner. So um, anyways, that's our schedule today, heading in there. 85. 77, 12 U, Deacon Robillard. 92. So we take everybody's exit speed, bat speed, bat path, uh, time of contact, get a blast factor from the blast motion. 58. All right, so on your neck, keep coiling back, and then turn into it. Good, pull back, back, watch back. One more. Cross over hard. Yep, flip it from right where you feel it. But really important for the players, we'll talk about this, this is your responsibility, okay? So don't just think that mom, dad, or whoever else is gonna do it. This is for you guys and then they're gonna help, okay? The first thing I wanna hit on is just being proactive. This is the biggest thing when it comes to the recruiting process, okay? So you, you have, it's gonna take a lot of work on the field, obviously, as far as, listen, your skill set is gonna dictate a lot of this, how good you are as a player, how good your academics are, that's gonna dictate a lot. But it takes more than just the on the field stuff or in the classroom stuff. It's gonna take a lot of this other stuff we're gonna talk about, this game plan, that again, you guys are gonna to have to do, okay? So we're gonna get into crafting emails and making a target list and we're gonna talk about all this stuff. Just understand that it's not just about, oh, I'm just gonna go out there and play and then all these coaches are gonna be like, I love all these kids and they're just gonna come after you. That's not how it works for some guys like that. But it's about finding the right schools. And I have no doubt that everyone in our program will get recruited by somebody. But the important thing is not just to get recruited by somebody or anybody, get recruited to the schools that you guys really want to go to. Okay, so that's why it's important to do the work off the field. It's about you guys, college coaches, to be 100% honest, don't want to hear from any of your parents, right? So they want to hear from you. When they hear from parents, they think, oh, this player doesn't really take it serious. How mature is the player, right? They're going to have all you guys for four years when you get to college. And they don't really want to be bothered by your mom and dad. I'm just warning everyone, one of our things is we have to be totally honest when it comes to evaluating you guys and telling you where we feel you can play. We're not 100% right every single time, but in the history of the program now, six years, we've been pretty close or right a lot of the times, okay? 
And one of the things to remember is, when it comes to our staff, is, I'm gonna go through it real quick, you guys might already know this, but I personally have now done this. This is our sixth year. We sent, I think, over 60, almost 70, I think, NCAA baseball players on to play college. Okay. I also I also coached college for two years, and I recruited in college for one year, going out and basically all year round watching players, just like you guys, and trying to figure out who can play for us and who can't. Okay. Um, but we have a lot of other coaching college and recruiting college. Coach one. Coaching our 16s, recruited how many years? Eight, seven, eight years in college? Seven years in college, recruited all those years. Okay, all, uh, D, all D3? So all D3, one D2. So he's got an, an amazing idea, and he just got out of it, of what D2 and D3 players look like. And he also knows what D1 players look like, because he's recruit, he sees those guys all the time. My dad's coached the last 15 years at St. John's Prep. He's seen hundreds and hundreds of players go on from high school to go on and play college. So after you do it for a long time and you see tons of kids, it becomes much easier when I see somebody show up, I say, man, I've had 400 guys go on and play college baseball. Where does this guy stack up to some of those guys at the same point in their career, right? So that's when you, when you start seeing guys year after year after year, that, it makes it easier to kind of match up your playing style, your skill set with where we think you can go, okay? So our job is to be honest, Sometimes I talk to players and they get all bummed out. If I'm not honest with you and if I just tell you, listen, you can, no doubt about it, man. You can play at that level, I have no doubt, and I'm lying to you, you're gonna waste all your time, all your money, and a lot of energy focusing on the wrong schools, okay? Make sense? D1 schools can't contact you, they cannot call you before September 1st of your junior year of high school, okay? So even if they love you, they cannot call you right now if you're a sophomore, or anything or other, they cannot call you and recruit you. I would suggest once you get to high school, you should start putting together a target list, okay? And this is just a list of schools that you could potentially be interested in. And the bigger, the better, okay? So I tell all the guys, I, I recommend like 30 to 50 schools, which is a big list, right? But the number one problem I see is when players come to me, want, like they'll come to me and they say, hey Matt, uh, I wanna go to these schools, and I'm like, Okay, well give me a target list, blah, blah, blah. And they show up with like three schools. And I'm like, every player in the country wants to go to these three schools. Or a lot of players want to go to these three schools. So you need a much, much, much bigger list than that. So I recommend 30 to 50, and I recommend diversifying the list. So you can put D1 schools on there, D2s and D3s, you can put some NEIA and JUCO schools if you want to, but you should, I would aim for like at least 10 D1s, 10 D2s, 10 D3s again, just to diversify the list. One of the problems that I see is that the list is always just all the schools that we all have watched on TV, right? It's always like BC, and if you're from around here, it's always BC and then Notre Dame, and like all these schools that are the most competitive baseball schools in the country. And I want everyone to have, like if that's the school you want to go to, that's terrific. But you need to have a lot more schools in that, okay? So if you're gonna put those schools, you gotta put D2 schools and D3 schools on there. Socially, just think about what part of the country you want to go into. Some players here don't want to go far away from home. Some players here want to leave immediately and want to go far, far away, okay? Some players want to go in the city, some want to go in the suburbs, some want to go in the mountains, some want to go warm, some want to go cold. The other thing you guys can be doing is starting to visit some campuses. And even if you're not even sure if you like the school or interest in the school, when you start to go on campuses, you start to get a feel like, man, I don't like this small feeling of this campus, or I really love this, or I need way more kids here. Like, one of the biggest things when I was going through my process is I got on to certain schools, like when I got on Wake Forest campus, I almost immediately got on and I was like, oh my God, I love it here. Like I just felt like I was gonna go to school there. I ended up going there. I went on to a different campus. Ugh, I don't like this feeling at all. Something about this place I don't like. And I just crossed it off the list, I didn't like it. So you'll start to get a feel for that when you get on campus and you feel the people and, and you know how big or small it is. You can feel that stuff pretty easily when you get on there. This is gonna be one of the big parts of the email that you guys are gonna send out, all right? So we make recruiting videos for any player. That's one of the biggest things that I have to be as honest as possible, and all the coaches have to be really honest, but I'm not gonna be like, hey, he's a super hard worker. He, he busts his butt every day. I'm not gonna say that, because it makes me and the program look bad if I say you're the hardest worker ever to get to school and you're the laziest player ever. They're never gonna believe anything I say ever again. So that's that's really key, is that I have to, they have to trust what I say, or else they're not, that it hurts everybody. Because they'll never listen to me ever again. So this is the email that I suggest you guys all um, have, and I'll email this to you as well. So it's really simple, you can literally, 
I just put this together so you can just paste in all the info that I'm going to type. So you're just going to say, hi, Coach Roberts, or whatever. And put the right name, okay? And, uh, and put his name, okay? You would think that's simple, but again, I got a lot of emails, and a lot of times they'd say, hey, Coach Johnson, they sent it to me. And if he from the last coach they meant to send it to. Or just his high coach, and it looks very generic. And they just blast it to a million coaches. So send it personally to the coaches, okay? It'll take a little more time, but this is like serious. So my name is, whatever your name is, uh, I'm a blank grad here, 2020, 2021, whatever you are, position from the school in the state, okay? So that's really easy. I also play summer ball for Antonelli Baseball, 16U, 17U, whatever team you play for. Okay. Include a short skills video, highlight video, whatever you want to call it, that I recently made, and then you're going to, I'm going to post all of the recruiting videos on YouTube. This is the easiest way to do it. And then you're, I'm just going to send everyone the link, and you're going to put the link right in the uh, email. So when they have the email, they click on it, boom, YouTube pops up, they watch it play. Yeah. Very easy. Okay. So here's how you know you're being recruited. If you get a phone call from somebody, you're being recruited. Okay, that's the number one way to know. No coach in America is going to waste his time to pick up his phone and call you and talk to you if he has no interest in you. It doesn't mean he's going to sign you, it doesn't mean he's going to offer you a big scholarship. It just means that he's recruiting you. So he's trying to get to know you as a person and he is interested in you, okay? That's the number one way to know. Ivy Leagues don't have any athletic scholarships. I coached in the Patriot League. Holy crap, you know how many scholarships we had? Zero. I couldn't give any players athletic scholarships. Most of the Patriot League schools have no scholarships. There's academic aid, okay? Now this is where actually most of our players get academic aid, okay? So this is really important. This is stuff you can control very easily. Make sure your GPAs are really good and do well in your test scores, okay? We can all work on that. This is super important. Every little bit higher you get your GPA, every little bit higher you can get your test scores, you get more money, okay? That is a humongous deal. Set up your own email with maybe something like your name and maybe like your brand here or something good, you know? Like, it, make it look a little professional, not like, you know, baseball killer at 20, like that's, so you, know? like, you don't want to school look at your email and be like, what is this guy talking about, okay? So make something like professional, uh, maybe your name and your grad year or something like that. Chest forward, chest forward, bring the ball to the middle, elbows out. Chest forward, bring the ball to the middle. Elbows out. All right, push it back. Push it back. Fielding position, funnel the ball to the middle, right to left, left to target. Cosman, you got to go about a foot lower. Oh, this right. There. Jared, bend your knees. You're playing too high. Bend your knees. Back flat, hands out front. Short. Yeah. Make sure our left foot's on the back. Take your right foot to the ball. Get up, help. Under control. You gotta expect a bad toss. Expect a bad one. Expect a bad one. Hey guys, quick pick. 
trials for pretty much everybody here except for maybe new, maybe a new hampshire player or something um so good luck to everyone we'll talk now that we at the practice you guys can get out of here good luck to everybody everybody's worked really hard you guys should be more prepared than almost any other player at tryouts okay so the most important thing when you go out tomorrow don't worry about what other players are doing don't worry about coaches thinking don't worry about any of that stuff just play your game 100 percent play hard and be calm okay I see a lot of times we get the tryouts, guys work so hard, and then they get to tryouts and they, they play tentative. Oh, I don't want to mess up. Oh, I got to, like, and I see players all the time, they show up and I'm like, who the hell is this kid? I just watched him all winter. He looked really good. And then you can see that they're playing tentative. Don't play tentative. Just play it 100% pedal to metal, balls to the wall, and let whatever happens happen, okay? Just got to trust your, your training and look professional, okay? So don't. Don't dress sloppy, have your shirt tucked in, wear baseball pants, okay? If you're wearing Antonio baseball stuff, that's cool. Whatever, I don't know what your certain schools are telling you to wear, um, but just look like a baseball player. If you're okay? wearing pants, wear a belt with it, please. Yes, please wear a belt. Please wear a belt, okay? Have your hat on straight. All those, all those really easy things, okay? Uh, a couple more things. When you're doing drills and stuff, get to the front of the line or at least close to the front of the line. Don't be the guy that goes to the back of the line. Okay? When you're transitioning from drill to drill, run. All right? Don't give coaches any reason to say, hmm, I wonder what's this guy work ethic, this guy's work ethic like. Focus in everything you got for that two hours or whatever, however long it is. Attitude and effort. That's Attitude it. and effort. Those two things are really, really easy to control. <laughs> for the young guys who are trying out for the high school for the first time, and, and or anybody who's getting the situation where you feel your heart really, really pumping, try to slow everything down. Now your mechanics are in, just try to breathe. I, it sounds stupid and simple, but it, it really is. Just slow everything down. If you press situation or a tryout, maybe you're the first guy up in a drill, the first ground ball of the day, slow the heart rate down, play, have fun. If you screw up, screw up. All right, move on to the next one. One screw up's not gonna make you not make a varsity. Slow the heart rate down. There's gonna be a couple guys every tryout where your talent level is gonna be really close to somebody else. You're gonna be almost the exact same player. And they're gonna say, hmm, which guy should we take? And they're gonna take the guy that does all those things that we just talked about. Okay, those, those, those are the separators. Yeah. 